So tell me, would, would you let your, I'm saying to the brothers mainly, would you let your, your wife, your sister, your daughter, would you let them be raped? Would you, would you allow that? If you knew that this rapist who has a history of raping has done this, would you allow that to happen? What would you do? Now, whatever it is that you will do, I don't think you will do nothing about it. And this is the very same situation that we're trying to remind one that's going on here in Africa with this Islamo-fascism. And see, the Arab and Muslim world, they ain't speaking about that. They're talking about, what they're talking about, uh, Syria, Soria. Look what's happening in Soria. They're talking about Syria. That's what's important to them. What's important to them is their own thing. And now, really, we can't really so much blame them for that. But we have, to look at it, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. How come we're not speaking about this right here? You know what I'm saying? How come we're not more involved in this? What, you've been hoodwinked and bamboozled again? Again, y'all? I mean, don't you know your history? Don't you know your true history? Let me ask you something. Let me holler at you. Really, I want to scream on you. You understand? Let me holler at you for a moment. Let me, let me, let me show you something. Um, remember this book right here, The Valley of the Dry Bones? Right? The Valley of the Dry Bones right here. Um, where's the other book that I just, uh, showed right here for a moment? Um, where's this other book right here? Oh, it's under there. Yeah. This particular, this particular book, the one, um, from Babylon to Timbuktu. From Babylon to Timbuktu. Because there's, there's a whole bunch of evidence of what we're talking about. And a lot of the evidence is already is already out there. I must have, I must have placed this down. Okay, it's under these books over here because there's, there's a couple of books that kind of point to a couple of different angles of it. From Babylon, you remember our people were in Babylon even in biblical times, as we're in a spiritual Babylon now. We was in Egypt in biblical times. Now we're in a spiritual Egypt to Timbuktu, to Timbuktu. I mean, brothers and sisters, we saw a vid on um, Timbuktu, and there was an a African, I think he was maybe Muslim or Muslim or whatever like that, but one of the indigenous Muslim people, he was in, you know, those cities that they had built um, in Timbuktu and everything. I mean, it was a high culture and a high civilization. These are Hebrew peoples. Many of them are Hebrew peoples. See, the ones who now are fighting against them, these black folks, the majority of the black folks who are pushing out the, the um, African or black Muslims from like Timbuktu and Mali and persecuting them, they, they are not, you understand, they are not Hebrews. You see, it's kind of hard for people in the West, especially under white supremacy, to be able to really understand these points. You know what I mean? Because you're looking at skin complexion and stuff like that. You know, light skin, dark skin kind of stuff. And, you know, that Woody Lynchism has done a job, you know, a bad job, an evil job, a wicked job on our ability to, to recognize what's really staring us in our face. But what's happening is a persecution of Hebrews, of black Hebrews. Now, some will say, but, they, but the ones who are being persecuted are Islamic too. So, so, what, that's the only reason for it? It, was, it would seem to make no sense unless there's more to it. And, of course, there is more to it. A lot of these people, remember we talked about that a lot of them was named Abraham, but they changed it when the whole Mohammedan, the slave trade, other things was going on from coast to coast in Africa, and the same Mohammedans work with the Europeans, like right now, these Afghanis and these Pakis and the rest of them, they still are receiving um, billions of dollars, billions of dollars from the United States Treasury, and then they're telling you that they got to cut your school programs. They have to close firehouses and everything else. You understand? They can't give more subsidies and everything because they don't have the money in the budget. But we found a billion dollars to give to these people who they tell you are fighting us and killing our soldiers or killing the American soldiers, so forth and so on. And you people just say, hey, I got to make my papers. I got If that's not a slave, you understand? If that's not, if that's not somebody totally hoodwinked and bamboozled, cannot tell you what it is. So what these people are, what the Islamo-fascists, 
in the invasion, the Islamo-fascist invasion of Africa, what they are doing, we can break it down in a three-point in a three-point explanation. And we submit to you John, right? John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. And the three things that they are doing is they are stealing, they go to steal, they go to kill, and to destroy. You remember one time in Rastafari, we used to say, kill, cram, and paralyze every weak heart conception, wipe it out of creation. Haven't heard that for a while, have you? No one seems to talk that way. You know what I'm saying? Is some, has something been found wrong with that statement? Is it not in agreement with the King of Kings and his Christ? Or has something gone on? Has, has something crept in amongst us to basically disable us? You know what I'm saying? This is why we're not on point about this. You know what I'm saying? We're not on point about this. If you're having bingy or you're chanting down these Islamo-fascists because you recognize they are enemies to the covenant. These are basically the, the 500-year descendants of Ahmed Grime on one hand and the Ottoman Turks. It's not the Ottoman Turks today. You understand? Because they've gone through a lot of changes. Ataturk, so forth and so on, study their history. But they are still, Ataturk was bring. remember, Ataturk was Turkish. He, he wasn't, he wasn't an um, Arab. He was Muslim, Islamic. He was seeking to set up a caliphate. You understand? And in a sense, they did set up a caliphate. It's like the Turks ruled for the longest period of time. The Turks are Indo-European or Hindu-European. Let's understand that. And we go to the whole root of the caste system. We know that the whole caste system is about persecution and downtrodding and downpressing the black man. You understand? And His Majesty says, Kedemawi Hala Selassie says, war. There, there must be war. We Africans will fight if necessary, as we are confident in the victory of good over evil, the righteous Africans will fight if necessary. And as it's looking, it very much seems to be very, very necessary. That's why, that's why faith is so important. Don't, don't trifleize this. See, the devil is trying to disarm you. He's trying to say, don't have no faith. It's just about you and you are your own God and blah, 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 so forth and so on. That's a setup. That's a big, big setup. Because when these situations happen, when the wicked... You know what I'm saying? Confront you. You know what I'm saying? Like breaks into your house and confront you. You have a right to kill him. You have a right to kill him. Now if you say, well, oh, you're talking about kill right there. The real sense of kill in this sense is murder. Is murder. You know what I'm saying? It, it is permitted to kill defensively. But anyone who is a thief who is coming to steal, you know what I'm saying, has also come to murder. So the Bible says kill, that's the King James translation, but really the context is murder. So they come to steal, to murder, and to destroy. And that's exactly what we see going on in the Mali area where these so-called Mohammedans, these Muslims, these invading Muslims, some of them are, are, are people in Africa, some of them are the kiss-ass black people in Africa that have gone over to this radical Islamic side because they figure that, well, I'm going to get down with this gang, right? If I get down with this gang, you understand, and then they're pulling in resources from Pakistan and from Afghanistan and, and the, where a lot of their teachers, the, 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 the pale red, the pale red Mohammedans, they're not really Arabs, but the pale red Mohammedans, they come under the disguise of Arabism. You know what I'm saying? They come under that disguise. So it's, it's kind of ironic. They're taking money out of African so-called Americans' pockets and mouths and your baby's mouths and the community programs and the college programs and the home programs and the, and the single mother program and all kind of programs. The only program they're funding over here is to imprison the black man is to imprison the man. And if you know how to make a slave, you understand what's all behind that. So, so we're not, you know, we teach on that when we're teaching the class that don't know about that. I think some of you should be familiar, and there's a lot of dialogue on that and other good studies on that that can break that down. That's basic information. If you don't know that, 
please go check out how to make a slave. You know what I'm saying? You need to check them out. So they come to kill, to murder, right? To murder. Let's put this here so, so nobody gets confused. Kill in the context of murder, right? Of murder or soul steal, of soul steal. So why would a Muslims or Muslims destroy other Muslim tombs as well as destroy, break in, and vandalize mosques? Why would a Muslim do that? Have you heard about that anywhere in the so-called Islamic world? Have you heard about that anywhere? You won't. But you hear about it in Africa. Why do you hear about this in Africa, and why is this going on in West Africa? Well, first and foremost, you really need to understand who's who on the face of the planet Earth. You see, niggas don't know who they are. That's why they be making up stuff, going cuckoo now. You understand what I mean? Really, niggas are going mad cuckoo. I mean, we just heard about this thing with one of these R&B artists, and this woman thinks that she's her, she, she's his husband, hus, 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 some crazy stuff, delusional. Niggas are strictly delusional because they have not grasped the truth, and they have run away from the truth. And the apostate teachers, preachers, and pastors, you understand, know have set them up and are setting them up for a terrible fall. But I and I of the remnant must come out, you understand, know of that false mentality, out of that, it must become unplugged before we can fully come out of the so-called matrix, you understand, know must get unplugged. You understand? Know and you must unplug spiritually so that the, from Babylon to Timbuktu, it explains the history. You understand? Know the history behind this. Who's who? You understand? Know Who's who? So when we saw this vid where there was a, a single librarian in, um, I think it was Timbuktu or Mali, uh, I forget, the, but it was West Africa where they have, you know, they have a lot of books. A lot of books written by black Muslims, you understand, African Muslims. So some of the blacks, some of you blacks over here who say you are Islamic and you make a connection with the West African um, Islamic communities and with the great things and the education and the, and the, the history, art and history, it's being destroyed. They're destroying it right now. I know you haven't seen it on the news yet. Look it up on the Internet. So, Islamo-fascist invasion. So, the target is Africa, and now we, we have been seeing it and talking about it in East Africa. All right? We've been talking about this going on in East Africa, and now we, seen, and we saw the, the news clip where it happened in, um, what was it? It was in Nigeria, so-called Boko Haram group blowing up African Christians at church. Why do they go to church? So it, it, it really shows you what these people will do. It's not going against the army. It's not going against other men who are ready to give you, give as good as they get. No, they're going against innocent women and children. You'll send innocent black women and children. Yes, a lot of them look like a black, but remember, they may be our color, they're not our kind. That's why you need spiritual discernment. You need spiritual discernment. You could tell when folks don't have that spiritual discernment. They spend an awful lot of time on how things look, you understand, and never, ever get to the spirit behind it. So now they're over in this, in this region over here. You understand? Now they're over in this region over here, right, in this, in, in this West Africa Region. Why? Because oil was discovered over here. Oil was discovered, and this was, this was the Gold Coast. This was the Slave Coast. This was the Ivory Coast. This is like the coastest with the mostest. You understand? So they're going over there quite clearly to steal, but also to murder. You understand? And to destroy. I mean, I mean the most ironic thing when you think about it. These, 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 these Mohammedans powered by these foreign Arabs or these foreign Mohammedans, these foreign Pakistani and you know the ones the the the, the pale the pale red and when we say red, 
Some of you thought we was joking about that, right? And so you see the video with the guy with the red beard, the henna beard, and the henna hair. Light-skinned guy come from another country, another culture. You know he, he comes from that Middle Eastern region, you know what I'm saying, like Pakistan, Afghanistan, the one the other I don't understand, who, who don't overstand the judgment they're bringing on themselves and their posterity. The global judgment. You see, because things are going to break down soon, and, and it's going to be where new orders and new, new groupings of people, new, new treaties, new friendships, new covenants, you know what I'm saying, must be created. So if you want those niggas depending on something that is already fallen and already don't exist and everything, you're going to be asked out. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be one of those people in the badlands. You know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, the warning is going out. So we need to understand what's at stake right here, you understand, know with the Islamo-fascist invasion. You understand? Know the Islamo-fascist invasion. They use Sharia. Interesting, they use Sharia Islamic law. They're trying to use Islamic law in a similar way that the European Christians try to use their European and pseudo-Christian law as well. But what does Mohammed say about this? What does their prophet? Well, we know they don't listen to Mohammed. See, to people who don't know the deal, to people who are not up on the game, they think these people are really religious and, and they really are true believers, so forth and so on. What's so interesting is that um, Mahmoud, Mohammed didn't think so. Mohammed didn't really think so, right? Um, and if you notice, you know, they had, like, this is their, their pale, fake, so-called Mohammed thing, and then this is the one that the York and the Sudanese um, the Ansara law put forward. You know, and you'll see that out there on the Internet, and they're saying that you can't show no picture, you understand, so forth and so on. Well, let's look at, did you know that the so-called Mohammedans and, or Muslims, and Muslim really means one of peace or in a sense, peacemaker. A true Muslim believes in Jesus Christ as the word of God, according to the Quran. A true Muslim. That's what we call them Mohammedans, because they're not even true to what they claim to believe. You know what I'm saying? They have continually for more than 1,000 years attempted to conquer Ethiopia, something called the Futul al-Habasha, the Futul al-Habasha. You know what I'm saying? The Futul Habasha means the conquest, the conquest of Abyssinia, and that's the false name that they have given. So whenever you meet an Ethiopian that calls himself a Habasha, a Abisha, either that one is but ignorant, either they just don't so, know they're going along for style or, or phase or something. You know what I'm saying? Or that one is a conscious traitor. That means they know what they are doing and they are rejecting 3,600 years, you understand, of manifest destiny, history, culture, the covenant, that they have rejected the covenant and they are no better than Judas Iscariot. You understand? In fact, Iscariot, at least he felt bad about what he did and he killed himself. These ones are not even man enough or woman enough to take themselves out of the picture and, you know, it's give way. Get out of I and I way. You know what I'm saying? Get out of I and I way. It's clear that you sold your birthright to be some other nationality. I'm, I, I'm sorry some of y'all don't get offended with it. Really, we don't give a, a, a bleep, expletive, deleted, deleted. It's truth. You know, because right now you still can do something about it before it's too late. You see, so if I was speaking persuades one of the truth, and they make remedy, they take recourse and remedy, that's good. You know what I'm saying? There is forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? There's more joy for that one sinner, you know what I'm saying, who repents. You know what I'm saying? Who repents of that, become, become wise to this game that's going on, right, against them and against their posterity. So for more than a thousand years, so-called Mohammedans have tried to conquer Ethiopia. Now, when we say Ethiopia... We are specifically speaking of that Davidic, Solomonic Davidic kingdom. But by extension, we are speaking of entire, whole, continental Africa. When we see the Ethiopia, we see this whole thing. You know we showed you the other maps and, the, and the, where the whole thing was called Ethiopia. 
You understand? And we showed you also the um, the writers, the authors, the historians. And Tacitus was the name that I, in the other lecture, there's so much on my mind to communicate. I, it's like the name was there, but I just couldn't bring it out. Tacitus, he was the one that said that the Jews, right, the Jews are of the race of the Ethiopians. That means that the Jews of 70 A.D. were black, African, Ethiopian you know what I'm saying, in humanity, you understand, in their humanity, in their, you say, in their appearance, in their ethnicity, so forth and so on. That's what we mean by ethnic Hebrews. But there are other black folks, you know what I'm saying, who are Canaanites. There are other black folks, you know what I'm saying, who have mixed themselves in and basically are Indumeans and Edomites. Yovas. This is why nationality, name nationality, is very, very important. You see, the only ones that don't know this game are Negroes, are, are blacks and colors who believe that they've been emancipated by their false father Abraham, not by our true father Abraham or Kedemawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, the father of true righteous Africa. Not just modern in that sense, but righteous Africa. So for a thousand years. So let me just go over some of the highlights of this, because it's important to understand this Islamo-fascist invasion that we see, right, in, in 2012, you know what I'm saying? And, and there's, there's so much that's connected with this. Uh, 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 just be patient with I-9. Just, just be patient with the Holy Spirit as well, so the Holy Spirit can really open your eyes. Once your eyes get open to this, you really start to have to go over a lot of things that you thought or believed or whatever before, and just weigh and balance. Some of them might be true. Some of the conclusions might be true. Some of them might not. But you have to really weigh and balance, you understand, when new evidence comes in. So in 524 A.D., it was said that the Ethiopians invaded Arabia and captured Yemen from the Jews captured Yemen from the Jews, not the so-called European Jews, but from some of the black Jews. Because some of the black Jews, because of religion and Christ, were persecuting, you know what I'm saying, those Jews who had now become Christian, you know what I'm saying, or had recognized our black Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying. So there was a persecution there, so the Ethiopians, already being from that Judeo root, you understand? And growing. It's like you go to, you go to um, elementary school, then you go to high school, maybe junior high or something like that, but basically elementary school, high school, and college. So it's like at the, at the elementary level was Judaism. You understand? And then that high school on a level, you understand, is, is, is Christ, Christina or Christianity. And now with the revelation of Rastafari, Rastafari becomes that university. You understand? The university, universal knowledge, the universal Christ. You understand? That collegiate level. You understand? The colleges will be the different ones who are Ethiopianists. You understand? Of the Ethiopianist persuasion. You understand? Or Ethiopianist, as it is said. So that was 524, right? So they invaded Arabia, but not against Mohammedans, but against Jews. You understand? Who were Jews like Iscariot. You know what I'm saying? But not Jews like our black Lord Yeshua, Jesus. No, they, they were not Moa and Bessa, the Emnegeta, Yehuda sort of Jews. You know what I'm saying? It's like some of our black Hebrew Israelites who still be hating on his majesty. We understand there's a lot of ignorance out there and a lot of things that you didn't know, and we're doing our part to at least bring them to you so you can check them out and, you know, decide for yourself. You know what I'm saying? But so the jury is still out. The jury is still out on, on some of our black Hebrew Israelites, even some of the haters of his majesty, because we know there's a lot of ignorance. And, and a lot of these ones have just really started to love to read and study because they find out who they be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, pray for them, give them time, but also let them know that, listen, you know, we ain't your little punk bitches that you can just say anything you want about our Godfather and the King of Kings. Let's focus, you know what I'm saying, let's focus on the word of Jah, the word of God, you know what I'm saying, and we have, as I say, bigger fish to fry, 
if we want to handle that, let's handle this bigger fish, and later on, you know, we can deal with our the differences. You understand? If they even still exist later on. 569 A.D., the Ethiopians attack Mecca. It is said some Ethiopians attacked Mecca and were repulsed. From this event, some say it started a world war that lasted more than a thousand years. Some say, but there's some details about that you need to really understand. But some, some of the first, the first followers of Muhammad, of original Muhammad, were Ethiopians, like so-called Bilal and others. You understand there's more. Dr. York did a really good job in clarifying a lot of that for us because he recognized the pale, red, and racist Arab tendencies, Mohammedan tendencies, and he tried to put us on point about that. You understand? But some people got offended because he was eccentric. You know, he was, you know, electric and eccentricity, so forth and so on, offended folks. Uh, you know, Negroes. Anyway, 601. The Ethiopians were driven back across the Red Sea, later to lose all their coastline to the Mohammedans, right? But see, what's not being put into this is some other elements that need to be really over overstood. What's not here in this particular, this was an earlier work that we wrote right here, and this is the cover of it. What was not, what was not put into it, right, into this one list right here was, um, this is from a document called, the rift between Muslims and Rastafari. It was written uh, June or published June, July, 1991. So it's not like I and I just just heard a news report and we're recording something. We don't know what we're just talking about here. You understand? But we're now showing some of the historical facts. Now, in 937, um, one named Judith or Yodit, who was queen of the Falashas or the Beta Israel, the Black Jews of Ethiopia, they seized the Ethiopian throne. A queen, Judith, or Yodit, she seized the Ethiopian throne, the Davidic throne, and she ruled for 40 years. In 977, Tekla Hymenot, the Ethiopian saint, he overthrew these black Jews and restored the dynasty of Solomon and the queen of Sheba. In 1192, King Lalabella built the famous rock temples of Lasta and invaded Arabia. In 1434, so that's obvious that was successful there, King Lalabella. I mean, if you can build what Lalabella built, <laughs> and angels, angels are on your side, our extraterrestrial um, Christ man, brothers and sisters, well, of course, it will be successful. 1434, King Zara Yaakov, Zara or Jacob, Zara Jacob, Zara Yaakov, he sent envoys to the Council of Florence, Italy. In 1442, Pedro de Colvilham, the envoy of John II, King of Portugal, he visited Iskinda II, King of Ethiopia showing some of the diplomatic relations of Ethiopia. So this Solomonic Davidic throne, where God says he will not lack a man to sit upon the throne, you understand, we can clearly see the historical record, because all these ones, they, they were coming to the throne of Moab, that's what's happening to Yehuda, the, the throne of David, you understand, the renewed kingdom of David in Ethiopia. That was very obvious. If that was not true, they could say, oh, you're lying about that. You ain't no from whatever. They could have said that, but everyone recognized that. So you dumb Negroes who just learn how to read the Bible, recognize your Hebrew Israelites, Project Jews, how dare you? I mean, really think carefully about what you're saying. Cause remember what happened to the other Jews? Our ancestors, when they rejected Yeshua, remember what happened to you? 70 A.D., our own Western 70 A.D. is just around the corner. You understand? Just because Christ even prophesied that in a certain amount of time, you understand, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen? And that did happen with, with the Romans. So we're in a kind of a stage and a phase. Perhaps it might happen this year with the 2012 and the election as we go into 2013, because the seeds have already been sown, and some, some of the weeds are coming up, and there's some deadly weeds, the weeds that are hard to pull out, to pull out now. They, they've gotten some root. This is what they're trying to do in Mali and in Timbuktu, and also the Boko Haram. If we give support, you know, to our brothers and sisters over there, 
You know, so if we keep this, make this the story that we make videos about and, and start to share about. And see, some folks will be like, oh, I'm tired of it. Nothing's changing. That sort of attitude is because you have no confidence, no faith. You're faithless. You really have more faith in your enemy than you do in your friends. You know what I'm saying? You have more faith in the devil than you do in the true and living God. You know, those people who, who be like, they give up so easily. Like, oh, I can't take it. Oh, man. You know, it ain't changing. While well, these people will stay on that stuff, like after 9-11, look how that Muslims, they kept talking about every little thing. This person was profiled because of their religion, because of their race. Then they tried to say race, religion. Then they tried to do the civil rights thing. Then they tried to do this and that, so forth and so on. And then when they asked us, we're like, yeah, they should have their own rights too. Okay, you nigga. You freaking niggas. <laughs> You know, I still love you in Christ, but you're a bunch of niggas. You understand? 1529, the war of centuries between Ethiopia and Islam continued. The terrible Mohammedan general, Mohammed Gerard, Mohammed Gerard, or what we call Ahmed Grain, he invaded Ethiopia. That was 1529. Now, I want, to, I want you to recognize that the target, Africa, let's put this right here just to give you a date on this. Target 20, Africa 2012. The extended title will be 2012 and beyond. So put that in your note. Because I really say that it's not 2012 you should worry about this year. It's really 2013. Are we prepared for 2013? Are we really prepared? You understand? Um, paper ain't going to save you. You understand? Knowledge will. You know what I'm saying? Not paper. So, see, we're making papers, too. You know what I'm saying? But we're making these kind of papers so we can get the knowledge that will save us. When we have the knowledge and the faith, the faith foundation is built on, nothing is impossible. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Some of y'all want to get the dessert before you eat a good meal, and that's why you're so kind of spiritually anorexic. You know what I'm saying? I mean... You give me your reason for it, and then and then give me the, the evidence for that. Um, 1544, the Ethiopians, aided by the Portuguese, should be the Ethiopian Christians, aided by Portuguese Christians, they routed the Mohammedans and killed Mohammed Gerard or Ahmed Grain. Hallelujah. You understand? As it was done before. But see, here, here's, here's the bad thing. Here's the bad thing. The bad thing is, right, the bad thing is that where were the African Christians, right, where were the African Christians to give the due support that should have been, that should have been, that should have been given? Where was the African Christians? Okay, I was going to bring that forward, but, you know, it's not time for the sword, is it? Not just yet. You understand? Um, so, that was 1544. Now, between 1529 or 1530 and 1544, within those like 14 or so years, Ethiopia suffered great and irreparable devastation. That's where a lot of these original um, pictures of the Black Madonna were also destroyed. That's where we also lost a lot of a lot of books and manuscripts, ancient manuscripts. It's, it's well known that Ethiopia has some of the oldest Christian and even Judaic manuscripts in the world. I mean, it predates the so-called European Khazarian Jews by at least 3,200 years, at least 3,000 years. It, it predates them. So really, who is a Jew? Tacitus already told you, the Roman historian, Tacitus, he said that the Jews are of the race of the Ethiopians. The Jews are of the race of the Ethiopians. Therefore, they are our people. They are black like us. They are us. They are our people. All right? And we are Ethiopians at home and abroad. You know what I'm saying? 1649, King Phosylides drove the Portuguese from Ethiopia. 
1649, because that is now when, when, when popery sowed these seeds that we see today sprouting up, where you, now you have Ethiopian Catholics, you have Ethiopian this, people are going to different pente, so forth and so on. The real seeds for this were sowed at this particular time, and this is why in the book that we published right here, the book about um, the book that we published on the church history, where that church history book that we published, the church history book, oh, it's over here, the church history book, church history actually goes into details of that. And it might not be the reading for everybody, you understand, but definitely in a in a scholarly way or like in an academic way, it, it, it's, it's vital to get that to get that historical perspective where you actually read a lot of the correspondence so you can really understand what really was going on. But a good summary of it is given by our late Abuna, Abuna Yisahak, Abuna Yisahak, right? Abuna Yisahak in this particular in this particular document right here. This particular document, the Ethiopian Tawahido Tawahido Church, right? Or what we call the Ethiopic Church. You understand the Ethiopic Church? It's so beautiful. They didn't put that orthodoxy thing right there. Called Bruno Yisahak. He he gives us a good view of that particular um, the Turkish. Notice how it's not really called the Muslim invasion, though they were using um, um, the same Islamo fascist. The tactics, Sharia law tactics, right? Um, because of Ethiopia's unique relationship with the true Muslim or the true uh, Muslims, the true ones of peace. You know, with them, because Ethiopia was a refuge. So the whole history of the, of the Hijra, it's like a, like somebody is uh, needs sanctuary in your house, and you invite them in your house because some of your relatives speak for them and everything. Because some of Muhammad's followers were Ethiopians, even like Bilal, right, um, the Muadzin, you know. And um, so you invite them to stay in your house. Then years later, they are trying to take over the deed and kick, and kick your great-grandchildren out the house. I mean, what would you call that besides ingratitude? Evil. There's no other way. It's evil. So the Turkish invasion, and you can see just for yourself right here, he talks about the Turkish invasion right here. You can, you can see the evidence right there. And he says Ahmed Grain, Ahmed Grain over here. Um, Ahmed Grain led the Turks, the Ottoman Turks. Remember, the Turks are the ones who wanted to set up a, a caliphate. You, you keep hearing, they, they want to set up a caliphate. And basically, they want to set up their own new world order. So what they're trying to do right now in Mali in Songhai, in Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Nigeria, is pre-positioned men and resources. Pre-positioned men and resources. You know this? Now, why does this concern I now? Because this is I and I inheritance. What do you mean why it concerns us? You know, and those people say, well, you ain't no African. Whatever. You know, to argue with them is like, you know, it's like it's like you go shit in the toilet and you turn around and you argue with the shit in the toilet. You really stink. You really nasty. Just flush it. Get rid of it. Ahmed Gran led the Turks into a terrible battle against the Ethiopian Christians. Ahmed Gran, an Ethiopian citizen, but Muslim, born in Hara to the south of Ethiopia, was the husband of Del Wambara, the daughter of Mafuz. Mafuze, um, mentioned in the previous section, assisted by all the forces of Islam. This is what they do. All their forces assist. That means they give men, they give resources, whether it's logistical, whether it's tactical, to achieve their strategic objective. And then they have some niggas, African and African in the diaspora niggas, Talking about it's not religion. We all can get together. We can have a meeting. A meeting about what? A meeting about when they're going to turn themselves in. When they're going to hand over their weapons and arms. A meeting about what? A meeting about their surrender to the real authorities to be judged by the fitta nigas, by fitta law. They want to get law. They'll be judged by fitta law. In our law, we can cut off hands too. 
cut off hands for stealing. You understand? If, if you want to go back to the canon, you want, you want us to bring out the canon, that's the canon that we're going to bring out. And that's why we're studying it now so we'll know how to operate in it in real time because the issues, the issues are, you know, prophecies being fulfilled. You know, so just recognize. So assisted by all the forces of Islam, he attacked the country from one end to the other, quote, and was able to oppose the Christians successfully. For over a decade, the invaders pillaged the land, affecting untold damage. Innumerable monasteries and churches were sacked and burnt to the ground. Ancient manuscripts and other works of art were stolen and destroyed. In the north, the ancient church of Aksum was razed to the ground. And in the south, the famous monastery of Deborah Libanos was entirely de demolished. I don't know about some of you niggas, man. You know, if you won't come and say, oh, you Rasta and you, I don't have no problem with Moose, you better just shut the fuck up. Straight up. This, this is, see, I'm, I'm, I'm the speaker here. You know, I'm, I'm uttering, I'm like the Alfred Negus. You know what I'm saying? But there's others who are just waiting for this message you know what I'm saying? As, as an encouragement in the right way, truth, and life to go about this. It's very serious. See, if you're still on the artificial status and waiting for your welfare check from the federal government, then you should shut the fuck up. This is not, it's not really about you. You know, I mean, unless you are, want to come out of that and you recognize the truth of this. I'm, I'm, I pray, I pray, uh, I pray my, 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 um, my brothers and sisters and, and some of the older and the more, the Kubran, the Kubrat, you know, the, the honorable ones for, for my, um, my, the harshness of my utterance. You understand? But the ancient wisdom says, only speak curses against evil. You understand? For once to try to switch through the story and try to make it that we are wrong because we're saying that we need to protect ourselves, our women and our children from this outrage, from rape, from murder, from destruction, from loss, from poverty. You understand? From 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 niggerism. You understand? And then folks want to try to do this kind of like be the devil's advocate. You better stand on the line, stand in the wall with the devil. You understand? Stand against the wall with the devil. You know what I mean? That's why it says that the devil and his angels all go on the lake of fire and list them. It says liars and cowards. Some of these people are just liars. They, they, they're not cowards so much. They would oppose anything that they would oppose. They would stand up. But since they're liars, you understand, they're dealing with a lie. They're not going to stand up for the right thing. So they catch them on lies, while there are other people who know the truth, but they're cowards because they don't have living faith in God to act on their faith. You see what I'm saying? To act on their faith. You know, and it took Ethiopia 10 years or so to really deal with this. How long will it take us with this situation that's festering? You understand? Like flies over a dead carcass or something. It's festering. You understand? This, this is going on right now right now. So um basically basically uh, um um Ahmed Grain, you understand, he was shot and he was killed. He was shot he was shot um off his horse, fell down, and everybody thought that his his followers, the Muslims, would have courage and heart and everything and they all ran. And that was basically the end of 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 of, of that. And also the, the Ottoman Turks were, um, they, would deal, they had to deal with other things. Remember, the Ottoman Turks, you would have to study the history of how these folks really came in. And let's just go through this right here, because we still have to talk about that bitter family rivalry. The bitter family rivalry, rivalry must, must be dealt with. So anyway, as we go further down, we come to 1843, Salah Selassie the Great. Um, he made a treaty with France. Um, 1867, a British army, 15,000 strong, invaded Ethiopia to free white missionaries. I think there was about a handful of them. The British sent 15,000 soldiers from Britain to the Mediterranean, to Egypt, marched them down, marched them across 
the um, Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. That's what it was called then. It was a condominium. That's their words, not mine. And then all the way through Ethiopia, uh, up into the mountains, some say that it was Emperor Johannes that actually made a deal with them in order to become a king. And the Tigrans, and, you know, there's a lot of that, that he was Tigray and and, you know, there's a lot of that chicka chick among the different tribes. That's so what we say. We're not into any of that. We're, our tribe is Yehuda. Moan, Bess, and I'm going to get a Yehuda. You got it? You got it. If anything, we, we have more um, um, righteous affiliation with the Amhara, you understand, and more ethnic affiliation with the Ormo or the Gala. Over here, we call ourselves Gala. Um, but besides that, in the New Covenant, we're not into all this other bullshit that people want to talk about since the, the godless and creeping coup against his majesty where you have tribe versus tribe. That's what the, that's what the devil is using that to, to, to destroy Ethiopia. You understand? To destroy imperial Ethiopia and holy Ethiopia. But in 1889, the Mahdists, or the Mahdists, 40,000 strong, 40,000, are repulsed with terrible slaughter by King John. King John, you know, you have to give King John his credit. Even like Melis, Melis in Ethiopia, and a lot of you don't like Melis, but that's part of your problem right there because you're not going to the root of it. The root of it is what you did to God's elect. You understand? Know you're never going to get no respect from heaven until you recognize what you did against God's elect. You understand? Know and put our father's house in order. This practically marks the close of 1,100 years of Mohammedan attempt to seize Ethiopia. 1896, Minulik defeated the Italians at Adawa. 1916, the Battle of Sagale, or Sagale, um, um, Lijasu, Ethiopian emperor was beaten by Haile Selassie. 20,000 were slain. Zodi II, placed on the throne. 1923, Ethiopia entered the League of Nations. 1930, Haile Selassie crowned emperor. 1934, armed conflict for possession of the oasis of Walwal in Ethiopia started the great Italo-Ethiopian quarrel, right? That's just a little bit of history right here. Like I said, I think this, is, this has been published already, but I want to I want to um, show you what, I want to show, okay, here we go. Here we go, my people. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for being patient. So right here on this page, like I said, this is some of the original, you can tell it's original, but you can see how the cut and paste, you can see how we cut and paste this page. You've probably seen it elsewhere in some of the other documents. But this is like the original, you understand, original document back in the, in, in, in the 90s that we, before we had computer, we had the old-fashioned um, cut and paste style. And, and that was taken from the book, um, The Real Facts About Ethiopia. We showed you that elsewhere. You understand? We showed you that book elsewhere, and we could show you that again. But here, this is the main point, this sheet right here. Um, we didn't have page numbers here. Sorry about that, so I can't tell you what page it's on. But um, this is, is saying, uh, did you know that Mohammed did not tell these pale, leprous, so-called Arabs to do what they tried to do to our homeland. That has to be, that has to be understood. I think it's very, very important that that is properly understood. You understand? Therefore, by extension, what these Mohammedans are doing, talking about Sharia law, establishing a caliphate, so forth and so on, that is not what Mohammed told them to do. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting. It's like, it's like with, with Moses and, and, and the Jews and Christ and the Pharisees. He was rebuking them because they were sitting in Moses' seat, but they wasn't doing the will of God. It's just like these folks, too, these Mohammedans, pale red, Hindi and Pakistani and Afghani, uh, Islamistani Arabs, uh, or Mohammedans, Right, coming now as far as West Africa, what, I know a lot of you blacks are not so Ethiopianist inclined, but there's a lot of blacks out here who are West African inclined. Where is the speaking out? Where is the outrage about this? You understand? It seems like every time a white person 
can, you know, if they paint, when they paint Moses white, everybody go for it. When they paint uh, Jesus white, everybody go for it. Niggas especially. When they paint Mohammed white or whitewash it, everybody go for it. When a black man steps forward and tells you the truth, like the Honorable Elijah Mohammed, you'll crucify him for one of his rebellious, Iscariot-like disciples, and that was Malcolm X. That was basically Malcolm X. Malcolm X says that there's no racial problem, and a lot of you still believe there is no racial problem among the Islamo-fascists because there's a few maybe true or some say ignorant, but true Muslims who don't go about in their practice of Islam like that. But they are being every day outnumbered by this Islamo-fascist invasion. So it's not just a threat for the so-called Middle East, like a lot of y'all have been led to believe. You're led to believe this is just like a Middle East thing. But it's the Middle East and Africa, and now it's not just East Africa, Ethiopia. Now it's going as far as West Africa, as far as, as Mali, Songhai, and Timbuktu. And Timbuktu. All right? So... Let's, let's touch on this right here. So, Mohammed didn't tell them to do this. And we're, we're not drawing from Islamic resources. Because people say, well, well, that's your opinion. And they'll say, well, in this, uh, in this hadith or the hadath, it was written like this or in this hadith, so forth and so on. Listen, the meaning of a hadith of our beloved Prophet Mohammed, and they have that Salih Wasallam. Um, logo there, in this book are rendered into the English language in a simple, comprehensive style, free from complications, so as to enable the readers easy, uh, readers understand them easily. T easy care, every care, excuse me, has been taken into consideration to translate the work in the most accurate form. But then how would, uh, how would anybody know unless you read Arabic? You understand? And now what's interesting is that they work along with, these ones work along with the Saudis. And, and one of the Saudi Arabian guys just died. See, see what I mean? Pakistan, Lahore. Lahore, Pakistan. And then they have a place out here in, in Elmhurst, Queens, USA. Listen, brothers and sisters, really, I, I'm even questioning whether we should even buy things like incense and oil from them. You know, I mean, some sort of boycott to these Muslims or Mohammedans should be should be promulgated, should be even just voiced, just to let them know that this can go through. You understand? Should we be successful in, in making the point? You understand? Because there's a massacre going on there, but it's black folks. You see? So nobody really cares about that. And unfortunately, black people don't care about that until some white person, see, if a white person watches this or gets the idea, goes out there and do something and put their European Anglo- anglo face to it, what's going to happen? Then everybody's going to say, yes, I I'm, I'm going to tweet you. I'm going to follow you on this and that. I want to be a part of this. I'm going to buy a T-shirt and all this stuff like that. So there's an opportunity for people who are invested if this part of the world means anything to you. Because I know a lot of the Rastafari people, whether it's Ghana or some of the West African nations, Nigeria was more central, you could say, or, or you know, um, Mali or any of these West to Central Western African nations, that's the place that a lot of black people feel more comfortable with. You know, we're saying some of the Ashanti or there's a relation. Hey, whatever, if that's, if that's your truth, but this is truth too, that it's rapidly changing. You know, suppose next time you go over there, you're going to have to wear a face, a face veil or your woman have to wear a face veil and you have to put on an Islamic dress or something like that. I mean, I mean, how's that going to be? How are you going to enjoy your vacation? You understand then? Sightseeing, going back to the motherland. And now the motherland is controlled by the latter-day descendants of the same one who sold your ancestors into slavery, the so-called Mohammedans. Yes, the Christians were involved. Yes, the Jews were involved. But I see that there is an ethnic connection. This is why I keep pointing out that the, the, the religious stuff is, is a part of it. But that's almost like a shell game in a sense. You understand? Behind it, there's an ethnic and a racial dynamic which all says, steal from the black man, 
kill, murder the black man, woman, and child, and before you murder the woman, rape her, you know, that's what they'd be doing, and destroy their history and their culture. So when we look at Africa, we say, how come there's not more things here? Because a lot of it was destroyed. Don't you get it? You understand? Oh, you turn, you turn to Hakeem or one of these guys and say, that never happened, that never happened. These guys are, are known to lie. I can show you surahs where it implies, um, I mean, um, hadith based on some surahs and interpretation by, these, by, by their Islamic rabbis, which really basically say that they're allowed to lie to the enemy. If they think you're an enemy, they're allowed to look you in the eyes and lie to you. You understand? It's almost like a mitzvah for them. It's like doing a good deed. It's like keeping their, their commandments. This is very serious. This is very serious. Because some of you will be like, I don't think he's telling the truth. i got to move some friends. I'm going to ask him. The question is, ask him, does he read Arabic? Does he really read? No. Ask him, does he read Arabia Fusha? Right? And he, he might be like, what, 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 what's, what's that? Okay, that should tell you a lot there, too. Anyway, we wanted to just pronounce it, you know, more correctly. Um, Dr. York had a book called Bilal, the Scepter Bearer. This is a bad uh, um, scan, you know, from the photocopy right here, so it's not as clear. Bilal, the, sep the, the Scepter Bearer, right? Bilal as the Scepter Bearer. Everybody knows, even the Mohammedans would be like, we're not racist. Because Bilal was an Ethiopian. He was black. If you read some of the Hadiths, <laughs> the way they speak about his blackness, it's, it's almost like, you know, when niggas be saying, that nigga's so black at night I couldn't even see him. It's, it's kind of shit like that. So, so you, 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 be, you be the judge on that. On this page I say that the followers of the prophet Mustafa, Muhammad, Al-Amin, peace be upon him, or, or, or Pibu, P-B-U-H, left their homes, family, and friends to live in Abyssinia, present-day Ethiopia, where they could freely practice Islam. Now, let's understand that. Islam was the only place in the world. Now, some, some of our Christian brothers and sisters say, yeah, well, that was good of the Ethiopians to do, but don't you think that y'all created this problem? And I would say as an intellectual reasoning, I could really agree with you on that. You know, there's something interesting to that. It's like if Ethiopia never allowed them to come in and, and to practice their religion and to learn things from the black Jews and the black Christians, that they incorporated into Islam, like cleansiness, like wearing white robes and, you know, that Judeo-Christian um, root, then what would have happened to it? That's interesting right there. But Ethiopia did the Nagus, Nagashi, Nagus, um, Arma, he did what he did. And, and as, a, as a Christian emperor, I think he did well because Ethiopia is the one that maintains balance between the Christians and the Mohammedan. I, I say that based on um, his majesty's speeches. His majesty's speech actually makes that very, very, very clear. Yet his majesty had to speak against what he called false propaganda. You see that right there? False propaganda. Because even in the time of his majesty, and there's some Muslims out there, Ethiopian, Abyssinian, I'll call them Abyssinian Muslims, out there, you understand, who say, oh, His Majesty didn't allow this and that, and His Majesty this and that. And what is so very interesting about what they say about His Majesty is that it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's like the same thing they, they use. They, they know how to play propaganda. You understand, they seem to be very much expert at knowing how to play propaganda. Um, his Majesty says right here in... Um, which book is this? This book right here. Let's, let's show you this. This is the speech book. So if any of you have the speech book, you understand, this is the speech book of, of His Majesty. We have this. We publish this and have this available too. Selected speeches of His Imperial Majesty. Selected speeches, right? Now, this is a hard copy that um, Local Number One Incorporated put out. Um, Brother Gebra, uh, Gebra Mariam. 
and, and, and his constituents. And it's a very good work. At least we can say from those brothers, this is a good work that they did. I wish some of these other ones who claim to be international president would do some, some, some good work that can help us. At least we can learn about the teaching of his majesty. But right here, um, it is said, he speaks about, it's on the personal diplomacy, a speech of his majesty on personal diplomacy. And he says right here, he says, Indeed, at one time, Ethiopia extended to both sides of the Red Sea. At one time, Ethiopia, you know when they say, was the Queen of Sheba, was she an Ethiopian or was she Arabian? What they're doing is playing to your ignorance or playing against your ignorance of history. His Majesty tells us that, indeed, at one time, Ethiopia extended to both sides of the Red Sea, as well as north to Upper Egypt. All right? It was... Therefore, not without reason that during the Middle Ages, the emperor, or Nagusa Neges, the king of kings, the Ethiopia, was known as, quote, he who maintains order between the Christians and the Muslims, end quote. A profound comprehension of and sympathy with other states of the Middle East naturally inspires Ethiopian national politics. And furthermore, in the next uh, paragraph, he says, the unique link, finally, both culturally and geographically, Ethiopia serves to a unique degree as the link between the Middle East and Africa. So you see, when the Illuminati and the Freemason and the Judas goat is carried, so-called Ethiopian sold out the emperor, you know, and sold out 3,000 years, they would, what they did was reorientate that whole relationship. That's so why if you look at the politics before and the politics after, you see a dramatic turn. And what, 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 what shocks me that a lot of these conspiracy theorists, buffs, so forth and so on, they haven't really put that fully together, which really makes me question, are they really trying to help? Or are they just caught up on ignorance or some bias? So Ethiopia serves to a unique degree as the link between the Middle East and Africa. So see what I'm talking about? Now they're in Mali, Songhai, um, 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 Central Africa, Nigeria, killing Africans, whether they're Christians or, or Muslims. It doesn't matter. See, some people think this is a Christian thing in Nigeria. But then how do you explain Mali? How do you explain the desecration of, of 15th century, or, or actually that will be 16th century um, Muslim um, 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 shrines and, 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 and mosques and stuff like that, burial places. I mean, what kind of people going to, you going to go into somebody's, destroy somebody's burial places? What does the Bible tell us about people like that? They're evil, and evildoers must be stopped, because they're not going to stop. We can't uh, hope that just that they're going to wake up one day and say, oh, well, I was doing so wrong. Let me stop that. Yeah, you keep watching Disney if you want to. Um, so Ethiopia serves to a unique degree as a link between the Middle East and Africa, situated in the Horn of Africa and along the shores of the Red Sea. That's before the devil carved away Eritrea. You have to understand how these things go, bro. You understand? With the desert area of Africa to the north and west, it is but natural that Ethiopia should be the filter known as, quote, he who maintains order between the Christians and the Muslims. You know, so there is much, this on page uh, 113 and 114. Those who have a, it's the same book, this is the hardcover from, from um, Ethiopian World Federation Local Number One Incorporated. Um, separate entity, legally speaking, but a good work they did. You understand? And we note that, right? And this is our publication, the soft cover right here. And on page 113 and 114 is the quote that we just made, that the emperor of Ethiopia, the king of kings, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, right, and all true king. This is why the monarchy must be restored. But a monarchy cannot be restored, you understand, without the righteous Rastafari. We have to recognize that. We have to know that. You understand? And the, the royalists have to recognize that. They have to know it. You understand? Know and our enemies, you better recognize it. You better know it. And additionally, you should repent before it's too late. 
all right? So the monarchy must be and will be restored in due time, you understand, in Jah's due time. What we have to do is what we have to do to prepare, you understand? And the first thing we have to know what's going on. We've got to know ourselves, and after you know yourselves, you've got to know your enemies. You understand? You've got to know who everyone else is. That wasn't our original quote that we wanted to mention, but we wanted to support that, submit that, you understand? Submit that as well. Now, His Majesty was noting on page 467 of the same selected speeches, he was noting, let, let's see what, what was the occasion. What, what, what was the occasion? He's, this is June 27, 1962. There's a, there's a domestic speech right here. Um, it was the visit to Eritrea. It's in the 1962 visit to Eritrea, visit to Eritrea, where His Majesty notes um, the false propaganda, the false propaganda, that he was noting that um, there's a bunch of false propaganda and instigators and instigators that was going out there to use the religious differences among Ethiopians. Before, Ethiopian Christians, Muslims, and even the Beit Israel for thousands of years, unlike any other country in this God-forsaken um, Gentile world system, the satanic world system, were able to dwell together, you understand, and live together as a family. And that's because they had the father, you understand, they, they, they knew the father. You understand? Know what, what did Christ say in that quote in John chapter 16, I think verse 4? They have done these things because they have not known the Father. Ishmael did not know the Father. You understand? Know By Mohammed sending his Suhaba to, to Al Habasha, you know, or, or what they call Al Habasha, which is really Ethiopia or Tobia, the archaic name, it was to get them to know the Father. You understand? To get them to know the Father. You see the, the, the biblical story of Ishmael. It's interesting how that also mirrors the whole Islamic Mohammedan story as well. Now, His Majesty is speaking a lot about this right here. He asked a question. Um, you know, he said that we've shown the, the Muslims kindness, you know, the Islamic kindness. And there's even some blood relations between us. But why is all this uh, propaganda? The truth of it is that they were being instigated by the pale red Arabs. You know, by, by the Indo-European, Ottoman, Turkish influence historically. Just like today, a lot of these black Arabs or black Muslims, one that look darker skin and black, African or Ethiopian looking, they are ass kisses for any of these pale red Arabs. You know what I'm saying? A pale red Arab tell them, go and blow up your monkey ass, and they will do so. See, there's that racial thing that you've got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? You've got to understand that it's like being a slave of the devil. You know what I'm saying? That's why they need Christ. They need Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? They need Yeshua. Except Yeshua. You know when they say the cross is a sword and the sword is a cross? In the right hands, that is not a problem. Are your hands ready? Are your hands worthy, my brothers? You too must leave all worldly things behind to be amongst those who live, it said, Deen Allah, every day. Really, of those who live, you understand, who live the way, the truth, and the life of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the reason why we went there is because on this other page, it's saying, did you know that the Prophet Muhammad, who was from the true seed of the Prophet Abraham, that the real Muhammad, not the one that they whitewash his face in pictures. See, that's, all, that's a funny game they be doing. And that's why they probably get so radical when they say, I'm going to show you a picture of Muhammad. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, we're going to bomb you. We're going to kill you. We're going to kill your family. I mean, how do you deal with people like that? You do what Joshua did. You, you know what I mean? You do what David did. You know what I'm saying? You do what, what Deborah did. You know what I'm saying? You do what the righteous did. 
You, you know what I mean? And we're going to go into that, to that, but if we don't get into that here, read Psalm 83. Check out Psalm 83 for yourself, right? Um, by way of the prophet Abraham's son Ishmael. See, if you were to see the prophet Muhammad today or the Ahli al you understand? They're basically Sudanese. Sudanese. The Sudanese were those who were pushed out of Arabia. That's so why we try to put up the vid, a couple of clips about Lawrence of Arabia, if you really want to know what's going on. We didn't get too much into that, but it's out there, and hopefully the wise among you all will check it out a little more for yourself. So um, he said that all these so-called Muslims, Mohammedans, except for his true followers, will end up in hell. Did you know? Did you know that? That Muhammad himself, and this is known in all of their uh, hadith, which is plural for hadith. Hadith are like gospels or tales or stories. I mean, some might say fables. Uh, you know, depends on how you want to translate that. You know, within that, um, in a lot of these sort of books, and they got a whole the whole volume. This is just one particular one. A lot of different ones who met the prophet or met somebody who met the prophet or collected stories or whatnot like that, books were written. And they use this in a sense like the Jews use the Talmud. You understand? As the Jews use the Talmud, the so called Mohammedans use the Hadith or the Ahadith. You understand? Hadith singular, Ahadith plural, right? And they use that as reference. And now, one of the particular Hadiths here. And this was reported by Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, right? Servant of their God, son of someone named Umar. So the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. He, he's, he's one of our Zemedi. You understand? He is. He, he never had any antagonism to Ethiopia. He recognized that the Ethiopians were true Christians, and for that matter, true Jews. You see, so when he's, on one hand, in some verses in the, 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 the Quran, some verses, he says, watch out for the Christians and Muslims. And in other verses, he says, hey, the Christians and Muslims are 